you want to learn how to axle grind. That's what we're going to learn today. Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. If you want to learn how to axle grind, you're gonna need to use the proper skates for it. And I guess now it's a good time to tell you all that this video is sponsored by Kaya. Kaya is the brand that makes these skates. These are the Kaya Kismet Barbie from Barbara Luciana, and these are the Kaya Ragnarol. These are two of the only signature model skates on the market, meaning skate park skates or bowl skates or street skates, whatever you want to call it, basically quad skates made for tricks. They also make two other models. One of them is the Kaya Jump, which I used this skate park in about, I think it was 2017 to make a video with those skates where I tried a lot of different tricks and also the Kaya Karma Pro. So Kaya has four different skates for this type of skating. Now, back to the video and let's talk about which skates will allow you to do axle grinds. So axle grinds are grinds that are going to be made with your trucks. In order to be able to do grinds with your trucks, well, you need trucks that are wide enough. And as an example, here I got the Kaya Barbie and the wheels, well, the wheels are quite big. Uh, I would need to confirm. I don't want to say anything wrong, but I think these wheels are around 60 millimeters in between 58 and 60. So with these wheels that are quite big and narrow trucks, you will struggle to do axle grinds on some spots. Example, if I want to be doing like an axle grind on something like this, it's possible, but the angle will be a lot more sideways. While if I'm using a wider truck, you can barely see the angle on my foot. So yes, wider trucks will make it a lot easier for you to learn to do axle grinds. Is it impossible to do it with slimmer trucks? No. And especially if you're going to be trying at a later stage to do axle grinds on rails, having a shorter truck will actually help you on locking easier. While on a wider truck, you will be a lot more unstable. So there's pros and cons of using slim and wide trucks. It's important that they are wide enough for the truck to touch. So if you're rolling just on your wheels and if the truck, the anger, this piece here doesn't touch on the rail or on the ledge or on the coping, then that is not an axle grind. And now let's talk about the axle grind. What actually is the axle grind? Well, there's different types of grinds where we're going to be using the trucks. The axle grind is the type that you do with one foot only, both trucks, and you hold it in this position. This is an axle grind. There are other grinds done with, with the trucks. Example, if you're gonna put both like this, let me show you. This is a 50-50 grind. Both the 50-50 grinds and the axle grinds can be done differently. Example, the axle grind, it's usually done with the outside leg. Right now, if I'm going to do with the other leg and leaving all my body on top of the ledge, something like this, this would be over axle grind. There's plenty of other grinds that can be done with with the uh, trucks, such as the side stance grind, something like this. That was obviously a front side. You can also do it backside. These are all way more advanced tricks. 
What we're gonna do today, it's the simple axle grind, and I'm gonna give you some progressions for you to learn. Before we even starting to grind, I think it's very important that all of you are able to roll on one foot on the ground. This would be the basic of the basics. Also, even before grinding, being able to jump to a little curb and roll with one foot only. These are all very important for you to be able to start grinding. And now, let's learn how to use these things and actually do a grind. The first thing that you're gonna wanna learn is simply to put your foot on top and be able to stand up on it and stay here. Depending on how wide your trucks are, your foot will lean more or less. I would say that if your trucks are tighter, it may help you because it doesn't affect how much your skate will turn or not, especially if you have slim trucks. Slim trucks that are very loose, what's going to happen is your trucks will open. When you, when you apply pressure here, your trucks will open and your skates will want to turn. Even if you are in a, right, in a, in a very steep angle, this will make it weird for you. If you are using wide trucks and very tight, it's usually very simple to just get this position. Once you can lock in that position, what's the next thing you're gonna do? It's the same as you would do on a coping that people call a slash grind. Basically, you just come up, you touch, and you come out. Something like this can also be done on a coping. What is a coping? Well, the coping is the metal that you have on top of the ramp. So, if you are able to do this, just turn for you to be able to do a slash grind or the progression to the axle would be you basically just kick the coping the metal bar on top and by kicking that metal bar you're going to try to put both trucks okay that is a slash grind and the slash grind on a ledge would be something like this Either way, they're both very simple. Of course, if you're gonna be trying them in a ramp, you probably need to be already used to go up and down the ramp. Don't try to kick or to put your foot on the ramp if you don't feel comfortable with the ramp, okay? Once you are able to do these, the next progression to do a axle grind and to move away from the slash, that would be touch. And now you're gonna to need to, for a tiny, fraction of time a little bit just a tiny bit you're gonna step on the grinding foot and put it down again something like okay it doesn't need to be very long you just need to for a very tiny bit of time for a very short period of time you want to be able to grind on that foot only and come back and that would be a good time to take a picture <laughs> And for a lot of people, that's all they want. That's not what we're trying to do here. We want you to be able to grind, to do an axle grind. So this would be the first progression. Once you can do these, of course, you can stay more time and try to balance here, okay? And that's almost the final, the final step for you to be able to do it. The next step is basically reducing the time to do this, you don't want to have both feet rolling, like one on the grind, the other one on the floor at the same time. That's like a no-no. Of course, while you're learning, that's perfectly normal, but as time goes by and as you progress, the next thing you know is actually to be able to, okay? <laughs> the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is to be able to not having both feet at the same time. So you want to, Either jump both feet at the same time, not everyone can do it, something like this, or at least step from one to the other, but never having both feet at the same time, something like Very important, the position of the grind. Some people don't know what to do with the other leg. You do not want to, <laughs> to keep that leg down. You do not want to put that leg here. Ideally, what will give you more control would be bringing your knee 
from the leg that it's not grinding to your chest. It doesn't need to touch your chest and your chest can also go down a bit. You don't keep your chest straight, okay? So it will be something like this. Okay, this would be the position where you would have more control. Something like, imagine if this foot would be grinding, I'll bring my upper body a little bit forward and bring my knee closer to my chest. Why is this important? Well, the reason why this is important is because in the future, you might want to do some grinds where you grab your foot. By being in that position already, it's easier for you to grab. So if your chest is forward, your knee comes up and then you can just, boom, grab your foot right here. Okay, it's way easier. Grabbing is something that you usually use to show more control on the trick and to get some extra style points. Some people don't know what to do with their arms. Well, if you have enough control, doing a grab could be a, a good way to have your arms entertained while showing some extra style points. Now, what we just said here, it's about getting into the grind. Now, how do you get out of the grind? You should be comfortable with jumping out. Like once again, you can do, if it makes you feel more comfortable, you could do the exact same thing. Meaning you could be here and put one foot down and then the other. So it would be the exact same thing that we did before. You can go up, go down. When you go down, you want to put first all the weight on the foot that it's down and then bring the other one. That would be total beginner. As time goes by, you do not want to have both feet at the same time. So if you're grinding, you want to jump both at the same time. When you land, you're going to want to bring your chest forward, bend your knees, and you do not want to put all the weight on the toes, you're going to fall forwards, or you do not want to put all the weight on the back wheels, you're going to fall backwards. So you want to spread your weight in between eight wheels, just right here. Some people prefer to open the stance in order to have a bit more wheelbase, to have more control. Something like this, if I'm grinding, if I have one foot in front, I will have a bigger space between the front wheels of the front foot and the back wheels of the back foot, meaning that I have a bit more balance. Think of a triangle where the base is wider, so it's easier to control. For me, I think it looks better if I can land with my feet together and use my upper body and my knees in order to absorb the shock. I think it looks better. That's basically what it is. Um, going from this ledge, you can go back to the quarter pipe. You were already good at doing the axle grind in the ledge. Now, we're gonna try to apply the exact same thing on the quarter pipe. We start with the slasher grind. After, after the slash grind, it's basically the same. You want to put the foot on the coping. We can even try as just a stall. I put the foot on the coping. And I bring the other one up. So it's this. Boom, boom. So you put your foot on the coping. When you put the foot down, you need to point the wheels in the direction where you want to go. Something like this. This is extremely important. If you put your foot side, if you put your foot sideways, you're gonna fall on your <laughs> on your side. So now that I can do this, it's the exact same thing that we've just done on the ledge. We're gonna try to carve a little bit instead of going straight, just like a slasher. Remember the slasher? I would go sideways, and I would let my foot touch it and grind it. Now it's gonna be the exact same thing. I'm gonna go a bit sideways. When my foot touches, I bring the other one up. Usually, where the problem lays here is, most of the people, when they do a slash grind, they stay on the outer part of the coping, of the truck touching the coping. Meaning that my foot will be in this position, like down. When you want to do an axle, especially if you want to do it longer, you try to stay more on top. 
So this is something that will feel completely different from staying with your foot leaning like this or with your foot like more straight on top. Those are two completely different things. And for that, well, I would advise you to learn on something like these or even like on a very small quarter pipe using a little step or even just a little flat bank will help you to, to deal with this going from the transition to staying in a stationary position that you are on top to then go down again. It takes time. You probably want to do a couple of stalls first. You obviously want to be comfortable with going up. You obviously want to be comfortable with dropping a quarter pipe before doing these, okay? And then you just put it all together. What you've learned now, what you've done before on the coping, and then you're gonna do a perfect axle grind. Once you do it on the smaller ramps, maybe you could try on bigger ramps. able to do an axle grind and if you are or if you are not for some reason if you are struggling with something let me know I would like to be able to help you either by answering comments or by even making another video that's it thank you to Kaya for sponsoring this video if you're looking for quad skates for skate park for any type of quad skates. They make all types of quad skates, roller skates, whatever you want to call it. Kaya got you on this. And they got this channel too. So thank you Kaya once again. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. You can always become a patron if you want to support what I do here or become a member. I usually upload content um, exclusive for members and patrons. But if you don't want or if you can't, it's all good. I keep on uploading here regularly. And with that being said, I'm going to finish this video the same way as I finish every other video. And that is by reminding you all to never ever forget why we all started skating. With quads, with inlines, big ramps, flat ground, it doesn't matter. We all started skating because it's fun. Now cheers and see you soon. By the way, these tricks can also be done on rails. It's a bit harder, but it's possible. You can just go here and just do it. Next time, watch this. <laughs>